Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of The Creator Speaks. About two or three weeks ago, the Walt Disney Company held in Anaheim, California, their 2015 D23 Expo. Now for those of you who may not know what the D23 Expo is, I'll tell you. The D23 Expo is basically Comic-Con in San Diego, but for Disney nerds. This is where Disney brings all of their biggest announcements, from parks, to games, to movies, and basically reveals them all in one place. And there was so much that came out following the D23 Expo that I felt it only necessary to tell everyone what I thought of it. And that's exactly why we're here today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all of the Disney Parks news that came out during the D23 Expo, and the videos to come I will be talking about the video game news, and, probably most exciting for a lot of people, the movie news. Now with all that out of the way, there is one more thing that I need to say, and that is I have to give a huge amount of credit to InsideTheMagic.com, a website which focuses on Disney, but primarily theme park news, as they were there at the D23 Expo, and all of my information basically comes from them. So now, without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so arguably the biggest announcement made during the D23 Expo was Star Wars Land. Disney announced plans to bring a Star Wars themed land to both Disney's Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World and the Disneyland Park. Each park is going to receive a quote, 14 acre land that will take guests to a never-before-seen planet with two major attractions. One, sending guests on a secret mission on the Millennium Falcon, and the other one, putting them inside a, quote, Star Wars adventure, face-to-face -face with the First Order from the upcoming movie, The Force Awakens. In addition, Star Tours The Adventures Continue, which is the ride based on the film that they've already had for many years, is going to receive a new adventure, featuring locations and characters from the upcoming Episode 7, The Force Awakens. My thoughts on this are pretty simple. Ever since Disney's acquisition of Star Wars back in 2012, many people, myself included, have expected a Star Wars land to really be inevitable. The idea that it's coming to both Disneyland in California and Walt Disney World in Florida kind of astonished me and just shows how confident they are in the project, in my opinion. And if the concept art is any indication, I expect that this new land will without a doubt top Universal Studios' Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Alright, so moving on to their second biggest announcement in terms of the parks made at the D23 Expo, Toy Story Land. Toy Story Land is said to be an expansion of Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida. It's going to be in an 11-acre land that will, quote, shrink guests to the size of Woody and Buzz, as they are surrounded by oversized toys that Andy has assembled. Yeah, Andy, not Bonnie. I digress. The new area will feature two new attractions, a Slinky Dog roller coaster and a Green Aliens Claw-themed attraction. In addition, Toy Story Mania, which is like... Star Tours The Adventures Continue is their ride in the parks that is already based on that property, is going to be upgraded to have a third track installed. Now my thoughts on this are probably going to be very controversial with many people, but I was not impressed in the slightest. Not only is Toy Story Land basically a almost carbon copy from Disneyland Paris, but it's not even a good copy from Disneyland Paris. If they were to copy something like the new Ratatouille-themed area that they just built. I'd be way more excited. Toy Story Land just looks and sounds tacky. Now, I could be wrong, but with the two new rides that seem to be as generic as they come, I just can't get behind this. This seems like another Dino Land USA move, for those of you who know the Animal Kingdom. If it was a Pixar area, maybe celebrating and featuring rides from all the movies, they could bring the Ratatouille ride from Paris, the Mike and Sully to the Rescue ride from Tokyo Disneyland, or the one that they built in California. I think that'd be a much better concept. But, as it is, this is one announcement that I wish they hadn't made. Now I'll admit, 
This next one isn't really an announcement as much as it is new information being given, but there is a lot to talk about, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. We got new information regarding Avatar Land and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Avatar Land, newly renamed the World of Avatar, is said that it will be part of the largest expansion in the park's history, with floating mountains, a bioluminescent forest, and the winged banshees. One of the signature rides, called Flight of Passage, has guests soar on banshees over Pandora. A boat ride is also said to be in the works for the area, along with unique food offerings. Beyond Avatar, the Animal Kingdom will get the Rivers of Light Lagoon Show, combining live music, floating lanterns, water screens, and what they're calling swirling animal imagery. Kilimanjaro Safaris is also going to venture out after dark, with new nighttime adventures starting next spring, where guests will travel through the African savanna amid the magically extended orange glow of the setting sun, and discover two new species that are new to the attraction, African wild dogs and hyenas. Now, when Avatar Land was first announced, I wasn't at all interested. I also was a little confused as to how Imagineering was going to tie the land into the overall theme of the Animal Kingdom. Well, while I'm still skeptical of the latter, I have to admit that the concept art and models that were released at D23 look promising. However, I do think Imagineering will have to do a lot to convince people like myself that the aforementioned Flight of Passage attraction isn't just soaring over California, but with a new ride film. Finally, I do appreciate how Disney's finally giving the Animal Kingdom some nighttime entertainment and experiences with the impressive looking Rivers of Light show and the aforementioned Kilimanjaro Adventures. Alright guys, so rounding off our look at the Disney Park announcements made at the D23 Expo, we got a little news regarding an update coming to Soren, the ride at Epcot and Disney's California Adventure. It's said that a new version of Soarin' is coming to both of those parks. Newly renamed Soarin' Around the World, the new film will send guests, quote, flying over natural landscapes and man-made wonders from all around the world, rather than just California vistas. Now, while I understand changing the film in Walt Disney World, as it's in Florida and clearly not California where the ride film takes place, I do feel replacing the film in DCA was a misstep. Why can't there just be two versions of basically the same ride on both coasts? Especially considering that the concept of the new film fits its location in Epcot much more than it does in DCA. So there you go guys, there was my look at the D23 Expo in regards to the Disney parks. Now granted, there was a lot more news about Shanghai Disneyland and stuff coming to Tokyo Disneyland, but I wanted to focus primarily on the states, as that's really going to be what I'm going to be able to experience. If there is an announcement that you think I missed or maybe overlooked, feel free to leave it in the comments down below and let me know. And until next time guys, where we'll be taking a look at the movie announcements made at the D23 Expo, I'll be seeing you. Bye guys.